Hello, in today's video, we'll be looking at arithmetic operators. We'll see what the basic operators are, such as the exponential, integer division, remainder, also called uh, modulo. We have the multiplication and division and the regular addition and subtraction. Alright, without wasting much of our time, let's go right in. Alright, so for basic arithmetic, uh, for basic operators, we have uh, these si uh, signs and symbols. As you will notice, there are some that are double, such as the very first one. The very first one there is the double asterisk, and it is used to perform exponential operations, such as 2 raised to power 3. Yes, when you want to do that in Python, you use double asterisks. Well, when you want to get the remainder of a number, you use the percentage sign. When you want to get the integer, division the, the integer division uh, of a number of two numbers you use double slash the forward slash and when you want to do the regular division we have the slash and asterisk for multiplication minus to do subtractions and plus for addition all right so the exponential which is the like i mentioned earlier the mathematical raised to power for this example, we have 2 raised to power 3. Now, when you want to represent this in Python, you don't write this literally like this, 2 raised to power 3. That means 2, then a subscript, uh, a superscript of uh, 3, it won't work this way. So instead, we do something like this. We say 2, then double asterisk, then 3. So this would also equate to 2 raised to power 3. Alright, so uh, just to... You know how we do it, we'll just do some uh, and then examples so that we get familiar. All right, so we have two asterisks and three. So just like our normal mathematics, two raised to power three should be two times two times two. That is two multiplied by itself in three different places. That's two multiplied in three different places. That's like this. So this should give us it right. Okay, so by the time we run this, we're expecting our answer to, to be hit. So I'm running my code now. All right, remember, I'm not in my directory where I saved my Python code. So I'm going to change to that directory, which is 30 days. And uh, now I'm currently in that directory. The name of my file is main.py. So I can call, I can run my file by typing main python, then main.py. Alright, uh, the other way I could also run my code is by clicking on this button up here. Alright, so now I run the code and yes, as you can see, it's printing it. That means it prints 2, then uh, this double asterisk, then 3. So this is equal to like saying 2 raised to power 3. Alright. <clears throat> right, so we have uh, some interesting things going on here. So I want us to remember this thing. So whenever we have two arguments, uh, uh, we have this uh, asterisk argument, there are always two integers or more than, so the, the, the results that you get from this expression would always be determined, uh, it's always either a float or an integer. Now, if all the arguments are integers, then your result will be an integer just as we have as this very first example that when both arguments are integers this two is an is an integer because there is no dot here and this three is also an integer so our result will also also be an integer but then when we have at least one of them as a float such as this is a float we have the dot sign we have the dot sign for both here yeah so it would return a float at least when one of the arguments is a float we would always get a float as the result and also uh this uh this is uh the, the operator is right-sided binding all right so before we go to there let's just show you this to show that it returns a float so if you remember from our example earlier uh, uh, we said uh, two multiply uh, 2 raised to power 3 then it gives us that so let us make this a float 3 by putting dots so 3 dots is the same as 3.0 
So if I run this code, if you notice the difference, the previous one was just 8, which is an integer, and this one is now 0 .0, 0, 8.0. So if I move this point zero, if I move that zero and still on our code, we see get 8.8, meaning that wherever there is a decimal uh, symbol, there it's automatically a, a floating number, a float number. All right, so if we have both of them as floats, I put the point there and I run. Yeah, we see get a float. It doesn't matter. It is only when there is no float for the arguments, then we get an integer as our answer. But when one of them is a float, you get a float as your result. All right. So we move on to the next part, which is uh, the last part here, uh, saying that the operator uses a right-sided uh, yeah, uses right-sided binding. What does this mean? If you see this, we have two raised to part two, raised to part three. What does this mean? Uh, so it means that it is right, it is right uh, side binded, meaning that it would evaluate whatever thing we have on the right first before going to what is on the left here. So it starts from the right, which is this three, then works it together with this two here. So we have 2 raised to power 3. Whatever the answer is, then evaluate with this. It won't do left binding. That is 2 raised to power 2. Then the answer raised to power 3. It won't do that. Instead, it will do 2 raised to power 3. Then this. So let us try that out to see what we get as our value. So we have 2. Yeah, something like this. So uh yeah normally so just to show us what it's what uh what i uh, just mentioned now so if it wasn't right binded so this is what we're expecting to get if it wasn't if it wasn't right binded it would do two times uh, two raised to power two so when you do two raised to power two that's four four then four raised to power three that means four multiplied by four in uh, four places in three places that's 64 so that should have been the final answer if it was right binded but then if it was not right binded uh, if it was not that is if it was left binded you should guess 64 as the answer to this uh, equation there but if it because it is not left binding now let's calculate from the right this time all right so from the right we have 2 raised to power 3 that's 8 that means the final year is 2 raised to power 8 meaning 2 like that in 8 places so i will do this right 8 that's 256 so if i should run this i won't get a 64 but instead i'll get a 256 as well answer exactly that is exactly what you get and remember whenever any of them is a float your answer will be a float see now we have a float because i changed one of them to a float Right, we get an integer because all of them are all integers. All right, so let us look at the next uh, <coughs> interesting uh, operator. Here we have the division int uh, operator, integer operator. Yeah, the integer division operator. Now, what does this integer division operator does? It is uh, simply picking out the integer. That is, when you divide, let's take for instance, this 6 uh, and 4 as a sample. So when we have something like that, 6, then 4 slash 4. Now, what does this mean? Just see it as he's saying that 6 divided by 4. But then, we don't need any other thing after the decimal point. What we need is the, very, the integer part, just the integer part. So if you know, if we should do this on the calculator, we should be getting... 6 divided by 4 should give us 1.5. Now, this 1, anything behind from this decimal point to the back, we don't want it. That is what integer division means. So it picks everything to the left. So it picks, for this case, the answer will be 1 because that is what is on the left hand side to the decimal point. Alright, so if I should run this code, we should get 1. And also, the, 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 the same... Uh, rule applies the uh, the float rule we call it the float rule where if any of the arguments is a float then your answer will be a float 
it flies to integer division you see now we get 1.0 because i changed one of the arguments to a float all right so we would uh, continue with to seeing more of the operators <clears throat> uh, so we have the remainder all right so what does this remainder does just uh, almost uh, the same way we just saw with the integer division but this time not we are not picking the integer part now now what we are interested in is the remainder part all right so what this does is when you do 1.5 instead of 1.5 you know 1.5 is also equal to one old number one over two all right so that's one old number then the one over two you know 0 0.5 is also one over two yes yeah, so the one on top which is the remainder that is what this speaks so if you look at this we have 14 divided by 4 so i will show you how to derive how to arrive at this answer the answer should give us a 2 i should do 14 14 uh, mode of percentage is that 4 14 mode 4 let me see let me run that yeah we should get a 2 so i will show you how and uh yeah i will arrive at that all right so the very first thing this uh, modulo sign does this percentage sign does uh, to get our remainder is it does the integer division that's the very first thing so it picks the first guy does the integer division with the second guy so when you do the integer division for 14 and 4 remember integer division is the very first part of it which is 14 divided by 4 we get 3.5 but integer division we're only interested in the integer part that is a 3 so we pick 3 so that's 3 for this answer now the next step is we multiply the answer you got here which is 3 multiply it with this second number here which is uh <clears throat> which is the division yeah multiply it with this that's 3 times 4 it should give us a 12 now this 12 will subtract this 12 from this uh, other guy so that will be 14 minus 12 which is then our final answer two. you could want to try it out with any other numbers and you would uh, see the result you can try it out with this 12 mode 4.5 this is an interesting one so you can uh, you you might want to see that out so you could just try it out and yeah let's see what comes out from there all right, so we have uh, here yeah, also it's what to mention that the result of the operator yeah is uh that that is left the result of the operator is always an integer because obviously whenever you are dividing by the time you are done just the remainder just the remainder is what we need so whenever you're also working with division, you don't divide by zero. So this second guy cannot be zero. Otherwise, it's return an error. All right. Okay. So uh, we have the uh, addition and subtraction. We are very, very used to this by now already. Where we say 2 plus 2, that's 4. And 2 minus 2 should be zero. All right. So that is uh, for this. And it also follows the float rule. Yeah, that is also important here yeah, so you might want to try to see what the output of this is i would have said we should try it out that yeah but then our time all right no problem let's see if we can quickly get that so when you have five times 25 then you have a mode 13 is that correct yeah maybe then we have say let's say plus 100 uh, plus a bracket for slash uh, on the bracket to multiply by 13 then integer division 12 uh, so let's say 2 all right so the idea or what to do here is simply you take the innermost to start with the innermost uh, bracket that is how to solve questions like this or whenever you see something's uh, equation as complex as this so you start with the innermost bracket and that is how uh, the computer to take it to start with the innermost bracket so if you want to check which is the innermost bracket this is the outermost 
the one that is outside 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 this is also like this immediate layer yeah this is standing alone so yeah so you could do this practically yeah you could you might want to do this so let me so if i want to uh, bring this out just to show us a breakdown so that is step one let's see that is step one uh, so for step one or oh, this is the initial step all right so our step one would be something like this sorry let me just quickly do that all right so remember i'm picking that guy and dumping it here so you see the same thing so but our step one we are picking the dynamo circle uh, the numbers bracket so 2 times 13 that should give us 26 all right so we still have that there so now there is no just one uh, integer so i can easily remove the bracket surrounding it yeah you might want to check this too it's also standing alone together in a bracket so you can also do this so if you do 25 mod 13 uh trying to think of my head what does that give uh, 25 let's say more 13 uh, yeah you should know that what, what what that gives you i guess probably that should be a 12 right okay let, let's do it so you say 25 mode 13 remember let's let's just solve it mode 13 the very first thing it does is 25 integer division of 13 right And that should give us a 1 because you can only divide this 13 in 25 only once. And after that, you would, yeah. So after you've uh, done that, you multiply this answer, which is 1, multiply it with this guy under here, 13. That should give us another 13. Interesting. Then you subtract this answer with, from this bigger guy, which is 25 minus 13. And that's a 12. Alright, so 12 is our, is our answer here. So, so don't mind me. I'm actually doing this uh, as a computer would. So, because this is an integer, I can easily remove the brackets surrounding it. No need anymore. Um, which should we do again? Oh, sorry. This guy should not be here already. Yeah. Alright, so which should we do again? Alright, so this is under in Namus bracket. So we might uh, just want to remove that. We don't need that again. Remember this step two, we are just removing brackets. Yeah, let me mention that. Brackets. Ah, sorry. All right, so that's made it longer. So this, by the time you evaluate this, that's 112. 12 plus 100. All right, I don't need uh, this bracket anymore. All right. Um, okay, so let's see if we are correct. So this guy is out. This other one is out. Then together with this, it is out. So we should have a number that's five times that number divided by this number, which is 26 then to force to force slash then this guy okay sorry so before we go to that part this bracket is uh yeah it covers for everything so this guy is still in a bracket here there's a bigger bracket outside all right so we missed that this bracket here i think i mistakenly cancelled it so that means we still have a whole bracket now if you notice here not just two numbers we have one two three three uh arguments inside there so remember the if you remember the hierarchy I showed earlier before we continued, we have the hierarchy here. So, yeah, the hierarchy here. So, we have in this situation now, we have um, asterisk and we have um, division. They are both on the same level. So, we're good. We can, we can do it, any of them at first. So, which should we do? Let's go with five times. Uh, one, one, two. I think I want to believe that should give us 
of five times one, one, two, uh, five sixty thereabouts. Yeah, five sixty. Uh, then just write that out. Five sixty. Then divided by I don't know this. Yeah, divided by twenty six. I think I need the calculator for that. Sorry, I think I might have missed something there. All right, anyways, let's just run the code. We got a 10. Uh, maybe. So, 560 divided by 26. Let me see. From the calculator, yeah, it's saying 21.5. Let's say 21.5. 21.5. Then, integer division. Remember, we are doing integer division of... So you just divide by two. We are interested in the first part ten. Okay, so our final answer should be equals to ten. All right. So let's run our code. Oh, we already did. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so our code. Our answer is a ten, and it has point zero. <laughs> Yeah, because this our last uh, value here was a decimal number, so definitely. So that was how we arrive at 10. Uh, all right, so we see, I see you again in the next class, uh, in the next video. Enjoy.